was a pleasant surprise for me to know that their friend Enoch was there. We call him as Enoch. It was a real surprise. Yes, as we said, I've known him from his ever since he was born. And it's a great joy to see that he is now ministering in different places. The Lord has given him the gift of word. And uh, he also happens to be the grandson of one brother, D.R. Devadas. They were all pioneers of the work in Hebron, Hyderabad in the 1950s. So he happens to be brother Devadas' daughter's son. I was also happy to hear him share the work, bringing that solemn warning for us to examine ourselves to take part in the Lord's table. Now, <clears throat> shall we turn to the book of Genesis in chapter 32? Genesis chapter 32, and we will read verses 24, 25, and 26. Genesis chapter 32. Verses 24 to 26. Shall we all read together, please? And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer for his grace and help? The loving Heavenly Father, our gracious and mighty God, our never failing and never changing God, the Father of all mercies and the giver of all good things. We do thank and praise you for this precious day you added in our lives and also this important day, a day of worship, praise and thanksgiving, where we as thy redeemed ones could gather together around thy table to remember you of your love and your great sacrifice toward us, to lift up our voices in worship, thanksgiving and gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of the five precious and important benefits for which, O oh Lord, we brought our collective and individual worship to you this morning. And we believe that you have heard and accepted our worship. Thank you also for bringing dear Enoch all the way from India to New York. And thank you, Lord, for the fellowship you could have with thy precious people and also brought in to have fellowship with thy dear ones in Bethany and also to bring the solemn and the right word of exhortation before you could take part in the table. Thank you, Lord, for showing unto us how insensitive we could be with regard to our spiritual condition. We do admit, O Lord, as Apostle Paul admonished Timothy Lord, in First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 and 3, Lord, these days our conscience seems to be seared with a hot iron. And that is the reason why we are not sensitive to what is happening within us and without us and also around us. So we thank you for the warning you brought and the exhortation you gave and the time you gave us to examine ourselves, to find out where, in which areas in our life we are insensitive and to seek thy forgiveness and to make a vow with you and then to take part in thy table. And as a Lord, this table is becoming a table of blessing and not a table of curse. Now we, as we are seated in thy presence to hear your word, those who are physically gathered together in Bethany and those who are online, we look to you, Lord, at this time. Lord, you are our nourisher. You are the one who satisfies us. None can satisfy us like you. 
because you alone have the words of eternal life. So this morning, O Lord, we look to you in great expectation. None may be deprived of their share and portion. Open thou our eyes that we may be able to behold wondrous things out of thy love. Word. Lord, you also promised to open our mouth wide and then thou would fill it. Even as we open our mouths with faith, in confidence, pray that thou will fill us and satisfy us that none may go away empty from thy living presence. To bless our time and make it profitable and edifying. The Holy Spirit of God may be set at liberty to minister to our hearts. And we ask all this with thanksgiving in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, that is, Jacob is saying, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. You know the incident here very well, how Jacob had this encounter with the Lord. And he was wrestling with God till the breaking of the day. And then the Lord appeared to be moving away, going away from Jacob. And at that point of time, he would not leave the Lord. And he says here, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. So he clung to the Lord, it appears. He clave to the Lord, just as Ruth clave to Naomi. Or like a small child, when the father is about to go for work, <clears throat> from somewhere he comes running and he holds, holds the father. And because he's quite small, he holds him by his leg and says, don't go. And the father tells the child, I need to go. I have to work. Only then I can get you chocolates. Only then we can all have food. And the father tries to tell so many things to the child. But the child is determined. He would not allow his father to go. Repeatedly he says, don't go, don't go. And then the father knows what to do. He just goes to, the, uh, to his table or into the kitchen and he picks up a chocolate and hands it over to the child. Then what happens? The child immediately allows the father to go. This is what exactly Jacob is doing here. He would not allow the Lord to leave or depart from him. Why? He says here, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. This appears a little strange, isn't it? We know Jacob is already a blessed man. He has, in fact, deceived his brother and father also. And he has received all the blessings from his father. So there is no lack for him at all. And if you go on to see, after his father's blessing him, see, we turn to Genesis chapter 30 and verse 43. You see, what a blessed man Jacob is. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 43. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses. Those days a man in such a position having all these was considered as a millionaire. So you can imagine how rich Jacob was. And people of the world looking at him would say, he's a blessed man. But here he's pleading with the Lord and says, I will not leave you unless thou would bless me. Why? What is the reason? Why is he asking for blessing from the Lord? Is he not content with his blessings? Or is he greedy about these blessings? 
No. He came to realize that the blessings with which he was blessed by his father, they were not true blessings. And therefore now he wants the blessing of the Lord. Because in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 10, we read, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. That is the sign of true blessing, dearly beloved. We seek blessings, we pray for blessing, there is nothing wrong. But we need to make sure that we are blessed with the blessing of the Lord. Because this blessing of the Lord, on the one side, it will not only make us rich, but also there will not be any sorrow with it. What the word of God means is, there will not be any regret when you are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. Or in other words, when you are blessed with the spiritual blessings. This is what Jacob came to realize. And that is why at this point of time, he says, he's telling the Lord, he's preventing the Lord to go, to leave him. He says, I will not let thee go. I will not allow you to go except thou bless me. Supposing the Lord would have asked him, are you not a blessed man? Why then you want blessings? Or if the people of the world would have asked him, Jacob, are you not a blessed man? You are having so much of cattle, so much of men servants and maid servants. Surely you would have had a lot of gold and silver also. Because Abraham was a very rich man and he gave all that he had to his son Isaac. And surely Isaac would have given part of those riches to Jacob surely. So Jacob is really a very wealthy and a rich man. And the people of the world would call him as a blessed man. So they would ask him, what more you need now? You have got all the blessings. Then Jacob would have told them, these are not true blessings. I thought I was a blessed man. I thought indeed, I've been blessed with all the blessings. No, that is not true. I do not want these blessings. I want the blessing of the Lord. Because he had an encounter with the blesser himself. This morning we saw how we are blessed. How we, the Lord is loaded with, with, us with so many benefits. And it is the Lord who gives these benefits and blessings to us. So Jacob had the privilege of having the Lord just with him. And therefore he would not allow him to go away without blessing him. Now, if the Lord would have insisted and asked him, are you not satisfied with the blessings that you have already got from your father? Then Jacob would have told the Lord, Lord, after receiving the blessings from my father, see what has happened to me. Or see what the blessings of my father are the earthly blessings, or the material blessings, or the worldly blessings that are done to me. And if you see in the life of Jacob, after he was blessed by his father, in fact, after he stole all the blessings of his brother, see what these blessings have done to him. There are some lessons for us to learn from the experience of Jacob. In a time, dear beloved, we are only particular concerned about earthly and material blessings. We are, don't make sure whether they are blessings from the Lord or whether they are the blessings of the Lord. And many a times we are not desirous of spiritual blessings in our lives. That is why our lives are empty. There is some lack in our lives. So this is what happened to Jacob. So what happened to Jacob might as well happen to us if you are not desiring and seeking the Lord's blessings in our lives. So let us see briefly the 
the sixfold experience through which Jacob went after he received his father's blessings. We read about this, uh, the father's blessings in Genesis chapter 27. And then as we come to chapter 28, we know what happened to Jacob, how Esau was determined to do away with him. He wanted to slay him. And therefore, Jacob, under the advice of his parents, he left his house and departed. And now see what is happening to him. Shall we turn to Genesis chapter 28 and verse 10. This is the first experience of Jacob after receiving the father's blessings of the earthly and material blessings and not the blessings of the Lord. Genesis 28 and verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Aram. The Holy Spirit has recorded this with a specific purpose. The Holy Spirit of God could have said, Jacob went out from his house and moved on. But here, the names are mentioned here. They all have spiritual meanings. Jacob went out from Beersheba. Beersheba means it is not only a place of covenant and oath, as we read in Genesis chapter 21, it is also a place of fruitfulness. See, if we come to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 33, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 33. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. So here he's planting a group. This is the first time Abraham is planting a group. And Bible scholars say it was a group of fruit bearing trees. Whatever it is, a tree is known for fruit bearing. So Beersheba is a place of fruitfulness. So see what is happening to Jacob, the very first experience. He had to depart from the place of fruitfulness. And then where is he proceeding to? That place also is recorded here in Genesis chapter 28 and verse 10. He went toward Haran. Now the meaning of Haran is barrenness, unfruitfulness, and there is great lack of water in Haran. That is the meaning of Haran. Where, see where he was and where he is going to. He was in such a blessed place like Beersheba, where it was a place of covenant, where it has been a place of fruitfulness. And if you read again the following verse in Genesis chapter 21, verse 34, we read that Abraham sojourned Beersheba for many days. That means uh, the, the Philistines landed this. That means it is also a place of victory. It's a place of strength. So all these privileges Jacob lost. He had to leave the place and move on to Haran. Haran is nothing but a place of barrenness, lack of water, and unfruitfulness. So we need to be very careful, dearly beloved. If you are not seeking the blessings of the Lord, we will also lose this fruitfulness in our lives. You will be unfruitful in your individual life, in your ministry, in your work, and whatever you do. This is the reason why some other believers, they lead a barren life. There won't be any fruit in their ministry. They'll be doing a lot of ministry. They'll be doing a lot of work for the Lord, but yet they're not able to bear fruit. Why, what is the reason? The reason is like Jacob, they are seekers of earthly blessings, not the spiritual blessings, not the blessing of the Lord. Then secondly, you see in chapter 29, the second experience of Jacob. Verse 20, and Jacob served 
Seven years for Rachel. Who is Jacob? Jacob was living like a prince. He had no lack because he was born to a wealthy father and a wealthy grandfather. There was no lack whatsoever. There are many servants in his house. Everything is in abundance. But now, having come to Laban's place, we see here that he was serving for seven years for Rachel. Serving means losing your liberty, losing your freedom. He can't do anything on his own. He was under his father-in-law to work and labor and serve his father-in-law. And he did not stop with the seventh year of his service. We know. Ultimately, he went on up to, to serve up to 20 years. Seven years for Rachel he served them again because Leha was given. He had to serve for seven more years. And finally, he had to serve Jacob for six more years. We will see in chapter 31. Genesis chapter 31 and verse 41. These are the words of Jacob himself. He says, Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages 10 times. How sad. He lost his freedom, he lost his liberty, became a servant. You have to serve there for 20 years altogether. This is the second experience of Jacob. Because he was dependent on the blessings of his father. Because he was happy that he was blessed. This is what resulted in his life. 20 years of service. Meaning, losing his liberty and freedom. Have you also lost your freedom and liberty? You're not able to pray. You're not able to witness. You're not able to worship. The reason is you are not seeking the spiritual blessings, the Lord's blessings. Your eyes are upon the world and the things of the world and also the compulsions and the attractions of the world. That is the reason why you're, lo you're losing or lost your spiritual freedom. If that is so, can we take a warning? Come back to the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, enough of these material things in my life. Enough of these worldly things. Lord, I want your blessing. I want my life to be fruitful. I want to enjoy spiritual freedom and liberty in my life. Then thirdly, we move on to chapter in the same chapter, chapter 29 and verse 25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? He went on to be deceived by his father-in-law. See also chapter 31 and verse 7 is what Jacob is telling the sons of Laban. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. That's what we see it saw in the same chapter in verse 41. The last portion. And thou hast changed my wages ten times. So the deceiver himself has been deceived by the father-in-law. What a sad thing. He is now coming into the experience of being deceived. You have to be very careful. If you are not careful about what we are seeking, what we are looking for, Jacob's experience will also become our experience. He was deceived speaks about spiritual loss, spiritual damage in our lives. So that was the third experience of Jacob. Now we move on to the 
fourth experience. We find that in chapter 31, verses 1 and 2. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. To the fourth experience here, he is being falsely accused. The Laban's sons are accusing him falsely. And then further, we read that, verse two, the countenance of Laban was not as before towards Jacob, meaning he lost his peace also. He was falsely accused and how much he would have been grieved because of this, how much he would have been hurt, how much he would have been wounded. After all, who are they? They are his kith and kin. And they are laying this accusation against Jacob, which was not true. And then we find because of this accusation and because what all had happened, Jacob, uh, Laban was not peaceful. His countenance was not as before. He lost his peace also. All because he was dependent upon man's blessings, material's blessings, and earthly blessings. And that is why he is going through this experience. Have you also lost your peace? Are we also having confrontation with others? Are we also being falsely accused? Maybe that is because you are not seeking the Lord's blessing in your life. You are setting aside the Lord's blessing and going after the blessings of this world, the material things of this world, the pleasures of this world, the attractions of this world. Well, Moses was not like that. We read in the word of God, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, Moses forsook Egypt. If at all anything, he is the one who should not forget Egypt. He, but he forsook Egypt, whereas the children of Israel could not forsake Egypt. Even though they were brought out of Egypt, Egypt, Egypt was not taken out from them. And that is why time and again, they would look back to Egypt. They would remember the things of Egypt. They would remember the pleasures of Egypt. They would remember the food of Egypt. They would remember the ways and traditions of Egypt. And that's why they would tell Moses, you want to return? Why did you bring us here to kill us in the wilderness? But what about Moses? He never looked back to Egypt. Never that word Egypt came was uttered by his mouth in his mouth by his mouth because he forsook Egypt. He did not want the blessings of Egypt. He did not look for the blessings of Egypt. He looked to the great and heavenly blesser. He wanted the Lord God Jehovah to bless him. And he wanted the children of Israel also to be blessed with those same spiritual blessings. But they would not, they would not hearken to Moses. How sad it is. So whenever we, we despise the blessings of the Lord, the spiritual blessings, and it results in our losing our peace. And that is the reason why believers lead a disturbed life. They say they have peace. They have say they have a God of peace, but within themselves, in them, in their homes, at their place of work, they are not able to have this peace. The reason is you are not seeking the spiritual blessings, the blessing of the Lord in your life. Then we move on to the fifth experience of Jacob. So fourthly he lost his peace and also he was being falsely accused. Now we come to the fifth experience of Jacob in chapter 32. 
Genesis chapter 32 and verse 7. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. How sad. Man who is supposed to be a blessed man. A man who is supposed to have no lack whatsoever. And even he got so many things from uh, uh, Laban, being with Laban. In spite of all that, he was still not seeking the Lord's blessing. And that is why in verse 7, here we read, he was greatly afraid and he was in great distress. Are you also in distress today? Are you also in fear? And that is a, the reason for that is you are not given place. You are not been seeking. You are not been desiring the spiritual blessings, the blessing of the Lord in your life. So he was in great fear. He's got many servants with him. Children are there. In spite of all that, he is in great fear because of this one word that he heard that his brother Isa is coming to meet him. So that put him to great fright. And then sixthly and finally, we read in verse 24. Same chapter, chapter 32 and verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. He is going through loneliness in his life. First of all, we saw how he lost the fruitfulness. He had to leave Beersheba and move on to Haran. Secondly, he went on to become a servant, serving in Laban's house for 20 years. Thirdly, he was deceived. Fourthly, he lost his peace. And also he was falsely accused. And fifthly, he was in great fear. He was he, the fear gripped him. Fear of death gripped him. And then we say sixthly, he is all alone. Nobody with him. You know why he came to this loneliness, how he sent away everybody in stages. Sent away his wives, sent away his children, sent away his servant, everybody. He was all alone now. So, in this loneliness, when he had this encounter with the Lord, he was pleading and asking for the Lord to bless him. Supposing the Lord would have said, You're a blessed man. What more you want? What more blessing you need? And I think Jacob would have said, Lord, take away all these blessings. I want to do away with all these blessings, but I want your blessing. You bless me, O Lord, and that is enough for me. Because the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. So Jacob came to that and the conclusion. The Lord allowed all these experiences in his life so that he may have a vision of spiritual blessings. He may have a vision of spiritual blessing and the blessing of the Lord. And that is why he is making this prayer and request to the Lord. Lord, you bless me now. Not my father's blessing anymore. Not Laban's blessings. Not whatever I've got so far. Take it away. But I want your blessing. And we are so, so glad to see here that the Lord responded to his request. And we read in the same chapter, Genesis chapter 32 and verse 29. And last portion, and he blessed him there. The Lord blessed him there. He did not say, go to so-and-so place and such and such a place. And there I will meet with you and bless you. In that same place where Jacob wrestled with God, where Jacob was brought to his weakness, where Jacob experienced the sixfold things in his life, in that place alone, as he asked, the Lord blessed him there. 
But before the Lord could bless him, we note certain things in the life of Jacob. First of all, verse 27. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Does not the Lord know Jacob's name? Does not the Lord know who he was and who he is going to be even before his birth? The Lord knows everything. But he is putting a test to Jacob. Whether he is really repentant. Whether he is really desiring a change in his life. Whether he is de really desiring the Lord's blessing and the spiritual blessing in his life. And that's why he is asking this question. What is thy name? Now, Jacob would not tell any lie. He would not be a deceiver anymore. And therefore he says, I am Jacob, O Lord. I am that same Jacob. I am Jacob the deceiver. I am Jacob the supplanter. I am the Jacob who has come through these experiences. I am the Jacob who is all alone now. I am the Jacob who is at the mercy of my brother Esau. And I am at the verge of death. The Lord saw his change. The Lord saw his attitude. The Lord saw that he has repented now. And therefore, he says in verse 28, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. There is a full stop to Jacob. There is a full stop to that deceiver. There is a full stop to that supplanter. And therefore, the Lord says, You will not be called Jacob anymore. As far as I am concerned, I am going to call you hereafter as Israel. This is the change the Lord brought about in Jacob, first of all. From being a deceiver to become a prince of God. Or to, or to be a prince with God, as the word of God states here. So he tested him. Jacob was honest. Jacob was sincere. He confessed his failures. He confessed his fault. And now the Lord changes his name. So he brings him into a new experience. So he changes his name. Beloved, the Lord may have to do that with you also. If you want the Lord's blessing, if you want the spiritual blessing, there has to be a change in you. From a deceiver, you must go on to become a prince. Prince of God. Jacob went through that experience. And then we read in verse 29 <clears throat> that the Lord blessed him there. And what is this blessing? First of all, the man who had no peace at all, <clears throat> the man who was in great fear, the man who was in great distress, the man who has become barren, the man who had lost all his freedom and liberty, what is happening to him? The Lord brought him in peace with Esau. You know what happened in the next chapter, chapter 33, how he was able to make peace with Esau. That is the sign of the blessing of the Lord. And then when he received man's blessing, he lost his peace. Laban and his sons were against him. The way they spoke him, it disturbed his peace. But now, the Lord is restoring the peace. The Lord is giving his peace to him because he's a God of peace. He alone can give that peace. So this is the first thing First part in the blessing of the Lord. Have you also lost your peace? Are you also disturbed? Are you also in confusion? Are you also in barrenness? Are you also being gripped with fear? Then come to the Lord. Ask the Lord. Tell him, Lord, enough is enough. I do not want any, any more of these worldly things. I want your blessing. Lord, I want spiritual blessings in my life. Lord, grant it to me. The Lord will give it to you. And then secondly, we read that he is being brought into the experience of Bethel and El Bethel. Because we find in the same chapter how he is coming to Bethel. And then we read 
that not only Bethel and El Bethel, we know what Bethel is. I'm sorry it is in chapter 35. Chapter 35. Because the Lord says, arise and go to Bethel. And he's coming to Bethel and we find the place where he came is El Bethel. Because the God of Bethel is there. Bethel means the house of God. See, from Haran, is now going to Bethel, the dwelling place of God itself. Where he was in chapter 28, where he visited, he's going back to that place and finding the God of Bethel uh, there. And then we see in chapter 35, verse 27. Finally, ultimately, he is coming to Mamre. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. He's coming to another wonderful place. He is coming to Mamre. We read about this Mamre in Genesis chapter 13, when Abraham and Lot separated from each other. We read how Lot went towards Sodom and pitched his tent towards Sodom, whereas Abraham moved on to go to Mamre and pitched his tent in Hebron. Mamre, which is in Hebron. Mamre speaks about fatness and fullness. And then Hebron speaks about fellowship. So that is where Abraham and Isaac were. Isaac was still there. So Abraham, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jacob was able to go to that mountain. He's coming into the fullness and the fatness that the Lord has kept for him. This is how the Lord went on to bless him in that place itself, in Peniel. The moment he surrendered himself to the Lord and asked, for, asked the Lord for his blessing. So when you and I surrender our wells, when you and I ask the Lord for his blessing in our lives, we will also come into these experiences. We will receive the peace of God, the peace that has been, that we have lost perhaps, the peace that is disturbed will be restored to you once again. And we'll also be able to come into the experience of the God of Bethel. We'll be able to come into the experience of the house of God. Bethel means the house of God, where the Lord has kept all his blessings in his house. There are very many blessings that the scripture tells about the blessings of the house of God. There is fullness of joy in the house of God, according to Psalm 16 and verse 11. And house of God is our hiding place, as we read in Psalm 27 and verse 5. And there is fatness and fullness in the house of God, as we read in Psalm 36 and verse 8. And as we read in Psalm 122 and verse 1, there is gladness in the house of God. That's why David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And in Psalm 77, verse 13, we read, David says, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. The Lord reveals his will to us in his sanctuary. And then we read in Isaiah 56 and verse 7, My house shall be called as a house of prayer, for all people, there your prayers will be answered. That was the experience of Hannah. She came to Shiloh, where her prayers were answered. And then another blessing we find in Isaiah 66 and verse 13, where the Lord says, I will comfort you as one whom his mother comforts. And the verse does not stop there. It goes on to say, you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. In our Telugu Bibles, it says, the last part, in Jerusalem alone, only in Jerusalem, you will be comforted. And what is this Jerusalem? The Jerusalem is the house of God. And that is where you will be comforted. 
So these are all, these are all uh, some of the many blessings that we find in the house of God. And that became Jacob's portion. And that will become our portion also. And then finally, he came to Mamre, the place of fellowship, the place of fullness and abundance. May the Lord make this as our experience. May we also be seekers of the blessing of the Lord. Jacob thought he was a blessed man, but he realized through the six bitter experiences that they are not the true blessings. So he came to a decision. When the Lord met with him, he would not allow him to go. He said, I will not let you go unless thou would bless me. May that be our prayer. May we say, Lord, I will not go from this place. I will not leave Bethany unless you bless me. And when you pray, the Lord will surely answer your prayer. His blessing will be yours and it will be upon you. And when he blesses, there will not be any regret. There will not be any sorrow. There will not be the six experiences of Jacob in your life. May the Lord make us as desirers of the Lord's blessing and the spiritual blessing. May the Lord help us.